Hello, thought I'd come out to the back porch and relax and I was going to smoke a pipe but it's a little too windy so I decided to have a cigar instead, which is something I rarely ever do. And I just thought I'd come out and chat at you and I say what's on my mind. My first attempt at doing is uh, video logs or vlogs or vlogs or whatever they're called nowadays. Got this camera with an external microphone on it. Thought I'd give it a try. I'm really bad at writing stuff down, day-to-day -day living diaries or journals. Tried it. Got me a really nice leather notebook and fountain pens and was doing okay writing down day-to-day -day stuff and then got to I couldn't be bothered with it and then I tried electronically a couple of times and got to the point where I keep forgetting to do that so just thought it'd be kind of cool to come out here and just talk like I normally would today at work was pretty good it's actually cooler today and there's a bit of a wind uh, we've been one one day earlier this week it was 105 degrees Today it's so, I think it's like 86 degrees, yeah. August 2nd, it's 6.20 in the evening. Very comfortable outside. Hope that music's not too loud. I like to listen to uh, music when I'm out here. I've got a Spotify playlist called Hawaiian Party going. Yeah, not really sure what I'm going to say, but just went to mom and dad's a few days ago for a couple hours and had a nice chat. Ben and Naomi and Alex were there, mom and dad, and uh, Eric showed up. We were talking about stuff, and then we got onto the, the subject of MASH. Um, Eric Eric's loves MASH, so do I. In my opinion, it's still the best television show ever made but he collects mash memorabilia which is cool we were talking about the final episode somebody my dad I think my dad brought up the final episode um, and we looked it up the final episode of mash and I can't remember what it was called it was directed by Alan Alda and it had, I think, 105.97 million viewers. I think that's more than any Super Bowl so far. I think it still holds the record. Not sure about that. Yeah, really good show. Some of my favorite episodes were Crisis, Army-Navy Game, of course, Five O'Clock Charlie, Smiling Jack, uh, Deal Me Out, Henry's in Love, Exorcism, The Bus, oh there's a lot, Mr. and Mrs. Who, that was a good one, yeah, I liked all the characters, I, what's funny is, I, I have to say Hawkeye was my least favorite, um, he's a womanizer and highly opinionated, but uh, he kind of held the, the thing together. So There's always discussion about who's your favorite Colonel. I like them both, but I have to say, personality-wise, I think I like Colonel Potter the best. And between Chap Trapper and uh, BJ, I think I like Trapper the best. Um, wasn't really a fan of Radar. Of course, everybody loves Klinger. And between Frank and, and um, Winchester, I, I, uh, Winchester had was a little more reserved and had a you know a bigger heart. But Frank, boy, Larry Linville did that character great because from what I hear, Larry Linville was the extreme opposite of what Frank Burns was. So. So I'd have to say Frank. He made for more comic bits, especially with him and his him and his relationship with Hot Lips. Um, 
Margaret Houlihan. Yeah, darn good show. I saw the original movie. It was okay, but after you watch the show, um, the movie's just not the same. Especially since the only original character from the movie that made it into the TV show was uh, Radar. Gary Berghoff played him. I think it went for 11 years, which is, at the time it was the longest running TV show, but it's been broken quite a bit since then. I think, I can't even imagine how, I think The Simpsons are still going, I, they've been going forever. I think Married with Children beat it too, which I'll never understand why. I mean, it's an okay show, but not for that many years. <sighs> yeah, today at work we were talking about uh, some of our favorite TV shows. Um, <laughs> I didn't have too much to say, except for MASH. Um, they were naming off a bunch of shows that I've never even seen. Not really into the modern TV shows much. There's a few I would watch, a few um, episodes, but never really got heavily into any of them. So. And we started talking about vacations. Shannon's going to um, Venice in February I think yeah he's been all over the world he's a master diver so he's been all over the world diving I've only seen China Hong Kong and airports of several other Asian countries and that's about it I haven't even seen a lot of the United States yet. Maybe when we retire. Although when we retire, Ning and I would like to travel China. There's a lot of China she hasn't seen, and there's a lot that, of course, I haven't seen. Um, I want to see Shanghai. I want to go to the Forbidden City. I want to go see the Great Wall, see the beautiful landscapes. Go to other. The only major cities I've been to in China were Shenzhen, Shenzhen, and Hong Kong. Which Hong Kong's not a. I guess you can call it a city. It's an island. Multiple islands. Ning and Angel went to China last year. I think it was last year. Yeah. They went to Shanghai. Went to Shanghai Disney. I was a little jealous about that. I want to see that. Ning promised that next time we go, I can go to Hong Kong Disneyland, which would be cool. I want to see both of them. I'd rather see those um, more so than Disney World. Yeah, I would go to Disneyland now. It's still pretty crowded, and they got all that construction going. Definitely won't go once Star Wars Land first opens up, because that's... Uh, that's going to be a madhouse. Um, they're making a lot of changes. Not only the Star Wars land, they're, uh, they took out some restaurants at downtown Disney District. Unfortunately, one of them is Rainforest Cafe. I've only been to two. One in, the one in Seattle and one in, at the downtown Disney District. Now they're both closed. I don't know when I'll ever get to see the Rainforest Cafe again. I love that restaurant. The theming is just awesome. The food's really good. Uh, they took out the ESPN zone, which I'm not really into sports, but that was a pretty busy place. A lot of people like that. And then another restaurant called the Earl of Sandwich. AMC Movie Theaters is gone. Uh, I believe... Yeah, there was a Starbucks up there, too, that they closed, but there's another one down at the bottom of, of downtown Disney District. So I hear they're putting in a high-priced um, hotel. I don't know why they need another one. They have one in um, uh, DCA called uh, the Grand Californian, which is expensive, and they still have 
the um, Disneyland Hotel and Paradise Pier. So yeah, I don't know when I'll go again. Last time I went was 2015 with Shannon. Poor guy though, he got sick. He, he was so sick pretty much the whole trip. He spent most of his time in his hotel room. I felt so bad for him. We went, we planned that trip for like two years. We went during the Hall Halloween time, um, went to the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party. I think I went to three, I don't know if I went to all three, but I went to at least two of them. And it's really cool, they had these certain time of night, I can't remember exactly when it was, but you had these uh, special bands that you wore on your arm, because you had to buy special tickets. Um, without those bands, at, at, as soon as they hit that certain time, they had people all over the place, and they would see if you didn't have those bands, they would march, you know, have you go towards the, the exit, said you have to leave the park, because you can't, after that time, if you don't have that band, you can't go on any rides, you can't do any shopping, so, but that was really cool. They turned down the lights and they put smoke over uh, the rivers of America with kind of like a bluish haze to it, which was really cool. They, of course, every year they redo the, the Haunted Mansion, which I just love. I, I, I'm glad I got to see the, ho the holiday theming of it. I was lucky they left the Hatbox Ghost in for that because they had just put that in and one of my trips through I actually got stuck right in front of the Hatbox Ghost which was really cool because I got some good video of it and some pictures got this, got a good look at it I like the Nightmare on it, um, what is it Nightmare Before Christmas theming of it I, I like the original better but but at least I got to see it you know the theme the, the holiday theming ones the, unfortunately, the Pirates of the Caribbean was closed most of the time we were there. I got to go on it a few times, but not enough, as far as I'm concerned, because I like going on that ride a lot. Sometimes I go on Pirates of the Caribbean, then I'll go right over to Haunted the Mansion, and then when I'm off that, I would go right back to the Pirates of the Caribbean, and then back on a Haunted Mansion. I'd do that a few times, because I just love those rides. I also like the train that goes around the park. That's really cool. But anyways, on the the Halloween uh, not so scary part, or the Mickey's not so scary Halloween party, they have these lines. They have special designated trick or treating lines, and those were actually longer than uh, the, the lines for the ride. And you stand in line all this time just to get a piece of candy or something like that. It just it's really weird. But you know, the kids love it, even though you're not allowed to wear costumes. But one cool thing they did, they had these bellboys. I guess they were like, I don't want to say zombie because they didn't look all gross or anything. They were just kind of whitish face and they had bellboy um, costumes on. But they were on a raft that went down the rivers of America with the candelabra and they actually sang. It was really cool. What else did they do? They uh, put projections on It's a Small World and on the buildings um, in Main Street. And they had that, uh, the animation choreographed with music, which was really nice. What else did they do? Oh, they had a, they rethemed um, Space Mountain. I think they call it Ghost Galaxy. That was great. I, I went on that, and as soon as I got off, I got right back in line and, and tweeted out that I was, I loved that. It was really good. It's really nice to see, and there's videos online that you can actually see that. I might put a, a link. What did you see, Grumpy? Did you see a bird or something? <laughs> Anyways, I might put some links to the videos because there, there's a guy that, that has this YouTube channel that he takes pictures in all these rides and he's got a really good quality camera and he posts those up so I'll put links to those if I think about it uh, so you can actually see these rides I'm referencing let me see what else did they do I don't remember if they now when we went it was a uh, anniversary 
So they jeweled, basically jeweled the castle. It was nice because it would gleam in the sunlight. I, I got some pictures of it, but it really didn't, the pictures didn't do it justice because it looked really good in, in person. Let me see, what else? Oh, we did Cars Land, which was nice, but we went during the day. I, I heard it, it's better to go at night because uh, of all the neon, but we went during the day. Shannon, Shannon did go with me on that, but you could tell he wasn't feeling good. And we, we rode the, um, the racing part, I uh, uh, forget what they call it, but the racing part, and we snacked at that V8 um, cafeteria there. It really looked good. It looked just like um, Radiator Springs on the movie. So that was cool. Now they, and then they rethemed when you first walk into downtown, or not downtown, Disney California Adventure to look like Hollywood from back like in the 20s, I think. And then they had these trolleys that went by, and then once in a while the, they had these the news, I don't know what they call them back in the day, they, they had the cap and they would, you know, the newspapers and stuff, but they would be on the trolleys and they would sing as the trolley was going down, that was cool. And then the, the um, Hollywood Teller of Terror was there, which I thought went with that theming really good. Now they've changed that to the Guardians of the Galaxy, um, which is still the same kind of ride. And I, I'm a little disappointed because I really liked the Tower of Terror, but from what I hear, the Guardians of the Galaxy um, remake of it is really good. I'm not into superhero movies and stuff, but there's a lot of people that are. And, um, I know the kids can relate to that better than the, the Hollywood Tower of Terror, um, which I have a movie of that, by the way. It's a really cute movie. And I hear they're changing the, I don't know, you, I don't know, I don't want to call it the downtown part of, of California Adventure, but where they had theme to make it look like old Hollywood. I hear they're going to be redoing that as well. Probably some Marvel type things. They're probably going to turn a big portion of the park into a Marvel universe. And like I said, I'm not really into superheroes, but it's a big deal. A lot of people are into that, so that'll probably bring in a lot of a lot of visitors. And they rethemed Paradise Pier to Pixar Pier. They they did I mean they did some theming changes, but basically the pier is still the same, the same rides. Uh, I don't know if the swings are still in there or not, but I know the the Wonder Wheel or whatever you would call it, and uh, California Screaming Roller Coaster is still there. It's I don't know if they made any major changes to that. I think they added more tunnels, but that's a good ride. I love that roller coaster. So yeah, so I guess Disney California Adventures come along, kind of getting more of a structure theme to it than it was. And in Disneyland, they rerouted the train so they don't they don't go. I don't think they go all the way around the park anymore. I don't know if that's going to be a permanent change or not. Once they get the the Star Wars Land finished, they probably, of course, they, I'm sure it won't be visible from that because that would totally ruin the experience. So I'm sure that'll either be hidden or they'll reroute the train altogether. The one land I don't understand that they keep there is Toontown because they don't really keep that up. It, it looks dated, it's it's not in very good shape, but yet they keep it going. I, I don't understand that. There's really only a couple of rides in there that people go to. The uh, oh, what's her name? Gadgets Go Coaster is one, which is a it's a kiddie roller coaster, but I mean it's big enough for adults too. And then um, Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin. I don't even know if kids even know who Roger Rabbit is anymore. But yeah, I don't know if they're making any other changes to like Fantasyland or tomorrow. I, I'm wondering what's going to happen to Tomorrowland because I'm sure they'll move Star Tours over to the to the Star Wars Land. I mean, it would go perfect with it. It's already Star Wars themed, but then it makes me wonder what are they going to do with Tomorrowland? Because Tomorrowland pretty much only has that. 
Space Mountain. Um, oh, the Astral Blasters. I can't remember. Buzz Lightyear's Astral Blasters and the uh, Autopia. Those cars are so... De they need to... Change. If they're going to keep the cars, they need to make them electric to make it more futuristic or... Yeah, the... I don't know why they keep keep gasoline engines and all that. I mean, the submarine... Well, okay, the submarines are is in Tomorrowland, too, basically. Those are electric. I don't know why they can't make the cars electric. But, uh, yeah, that we got to see that Finding Nemo when we went. That, that actually was kind of cool, the way they did under underwater s screens and stuff. really blowing today so yeah I don't know what they're gonna do with Tomorrowland they need to do something because it's I wish they would bring it the, they'll never do it but I wish they would bring the people mover back and if they're not gonna bring it back they need to take that track out I mean if they're not gonna bring it back there's I can't see any reason to keep that track there yeah I mean you're gonna have to clutter there, there's parts of it they'll have to you know close some buildings down but they really just need to close Tomorrowland down completely and redo the whole thing and not do it the Jules Verne look like they tried back in early 2000 because that just did not go well I think they were just cheaping out on that but um, yeah they need to they need to retheme it instead of Tomorrowland they need to call it I don't know they need to do something. Maybe, maybe like um, what would be kind of cool is like, like the '40s and the '50s ideal of what the future would look like. I mean, if they did something like that, then they wouldn't have to worry about it being outdated. And then um, if that got old, then they can just pick another decade and choose their version of the future. So it'd be like a retro future type thing. I think that would go over really good. Let me see. Oh, Justin went a couple of years ago. A uh, guy I work with. He went a couple of years ago and he went on the uh, Walking in Walt's Footsteps tour and he loved it. He said it was great. They got to go in Walt's uh, apartment above the firehouse. I've never seen that. I would love to see that. He said it was wonderful. It took hours. And the nice guy, you get you get this pin, it's a it hinged pin, has Walt on the front, and I think he's standing in front of the castle. And then you open it up, and, and on the inside is the plaque that's on Main Street of his opening day speech. And you can only get that pin on the walking in Walt's footsteps, and he gave it to me. I was flabbergasted, I thought that was the coolest thing. Probably enough of Disneyland. I know they're making a lot of changes. A lot of changes. Hope for the good. They changed Pirates of the Caribbean again. They redid. And you know what? I don't remember if they had done that when I went. The last time was 2015. I don't know if they had made that change then or not. I, I, you would think I would have noticed it. But they changed the auctioneer scene. Where before they were auctioning off the the local women to the pirates are trying to uh, you know the we wants the redhead part and they changed it to where they're auctioning off like the, the townspeople's belongings the paintings and gold and silver and jewels and stuff like that and what's funny is they left the redhead in but a different version of the redhead where she's a she's a, another pirate uh, standing there with a gun and they did really good on that that scene it looks good I was a little disappointed that they made that change but I can understand that they you know they try to keep things fresh without changing too much of it and at the times are changing and like I always say you know Walt said Disneyland would never change so I mean would never stay the same it was always changing so but they did a really good job on it, it looks it looks really good 
any other changes that are going on now besides the... Oh. Did they change Haunted Mansion? No, I don't think they changed it again. But yeah. So, don't know when I'll be going back there. Probably be a while. I do want to see Shanghai Disney. The girls went to that on their trip last year and I guess it looked... I saw some videos of it. It looks really cool. That's the newest one, I think. What else is going on? Oh, about a week ago I got over, finally got completely over um, Vertigo. I came down with Vertigo. They, uh, I was fine. One weekend I was fine. Saturday, Sunday. Went to bed Sunday night. Got up Monday morning, about fell to my knees. The whole room started spinning and I felt like I was spinning and it didn't stop. And I barely made it to the bathroom. I got sick. Actually got sick a couple of times. And I called into work. And basically all I could do was sleep or, or just sit straight up facing forward as long as nothing was moving. And then the next day it was still just as bad. I tried to go to actually tried to go to work, got dressed. Ning took me, drove me, and then walked me down. She had to walk me down. I, I couldn't walk on my own. And I just I sat on that chair and I just I can't do it. I can't read. I can't move around. So they got me a wheelchair and Ning took me up to emergency. And that's how I found out I had vertigo. And they basically just prescribed me Dramamine, sent me home. So I took that. I was out the whole week and towards the end of the week, actually on Wednesday I think, so the third day, I thought, well, I need to get out of this house. I'm tired of just sitting here staring forward. So I said, well, I'm not watching TV. Let's, I said, Ning, let's go to, to Starbucks. And the car trip almost killed me. I was ugh, just holding on for dear life. And we got there and I'm just sitting there thinking, okay, this is fine. I can sit there and drink coffee and stare forward. But just the people walking back and forth made me so dizzy I was there 10 minutes and I had to leave and then later on that week I started to watch a little bit of TV but I had to because normally I sit and I look you know kind of look up I'm in my lounge chair look up to TV couldn't do that without getting sick so I got a chair put some pillows on it so I could watch it straight forward and I could watch TV as long as I was st there was not a whole lot of movement going on so if that, you know, as long as there wasn't a whole lot of movement, I was okay for the most part. I kind of felt a little lightheaded, but but as soon as a commercial would come on with all the movement, I had to, had to cover it up. I couldn't, I didn't get to where I could actually watch any kind of TV or re read for that matter until the following Monday. And I went back to work that day and it was touch and go, but I, I did make it, I actually made it through the whole week. And then following week I said did I make it through the whole week I don't think I no I didn't but that no I didn't make it through that week it was touch and go and then the following Monday I felt fine uh, that Sunday and Monday I'm like great I think it's gone this is great Tuesday I felt kind of funky I just like yeah you know, I kind of feel weird again. And I was fine unless I tried to read or you know, really concentrate on anything. And I was, I couldn't read. So I had to, I actually had to leave work early that day because I have to be able to read for my job, so. But since then, the, the doc, I had gone to the doctor the, the week before and they gave me some exercises, so I'd been doing those. And at that point, I just decided, you know, I was feeling fine Sunday and Monday and I kept doing the exercises. I'm going to stop doing the exercises because I think what might be happening is whatever the exercise do to dislodge the whatever's happening in the inner ear, it was probably maybe causing it to happen again. So I stopped exer I stopped doing those exercises and then ever since then I felt fine. No dizziness. The weirdest thing. I've never experienced motion sickness before. That was so weird. But I feel fine now. Able to drive and all that. I couldn't drive for a week and a half, which is, uh, drove me nuts. I hate being grounded. Let's see what else is going on. 
Well, Ning and Angel, not next week, but the week after, are going to Oregon for a few days. They like doing that about, well, approximately one, about once a year, maybe every other year. They like going somewhere fairly close, just the two of them. Last time they went to Vancouver, Canada. I think the year before that, or two years before that, they went to San Francisco. So I think it's cool. They can spend time together. So, don't know what I'm going to be doing that week. Probably same old, same old. Going to work, coming home, and chilling out. <laughs> but uh, Ning and I are going... No, Shannon and I are going to uh, Mariners New York game September 7th, I think. We're going to sit up on... Uh, just right above, kind of above home plate. Up there. I've never been that close before um, but we usually drive there the night before how did we do it last time no we drove that morning checked into the hotel um, the light link rail is just like a block away from the hotel so we took that into the stadium and we had lunch at uh, pyramid right right across from the stadium then we went to the game and then jumped on the link rail and went back to the hotel and the next day we went spent the day in Fremont and looked around there he had never been to Fremont before showed him the troll under the bridge and took him to the we went to, <laughs> we were hungry and we went to this one we got there early and not too many places were open we went to this one restaurant for breakfast and it was like a uh, Indian, you know, Middle Eastern India type healthy supposedly food place and it wasn't that good. <laughs> I thought, oh, I got potatoes and I was like, well, how can you screw up potatoes? Yeah, they screwed up the potatoes. <laughs> it wasn't good. Uh, we both left hungry still. So we won't eat there again. And then we uh, took them to Fremont Brewery. And not much of a beer drinker, but I got him a summertime ale and he liked that. Then we came home. Speaking of, before, um, I think a month before that, Jeff and I went to Seattle to go to a place in Tacoma called Smokey Joe's. And before that trip, I took my car in for its 5,000 mile maintenance. So they did that. And then I noticed when Jeff and I went to Seattle, and on the way back, each trip I only burned a quarter of a tank of gas, which was amazing. In my big car, a quarter of a tank of gas. And I don't have really that big of a gas tank. So I, I'm wondering if when they did the 5,000 mile maintenance, if they kind of tweaked the computer or something. But uh, the gas mileage on that thing has been amazing since. But anyways, yeah, so Jeff and I went to Smokey Joe's. It's a, it's a kind of a bar, cigar, pipe place above a casino there in Tacoma, a small casino where you can actually sit and it's like a gentleman's lounge, you have the leather couches and stuff. So we're sitting there smoking our pipes and having a beer and chatting and all of a sudden this, these guys came in and they sit on the, they asked, we minded if they sat on the couches across from us and we're like, no, not at all. It ended up being a group that uh, about five or six guys that get together every year there and they bring all their pipe tobaccos and their pipes and they just sit and chat and smoke pipes and share tobacco. So that was cool. We, we uh, One of the guys has a YouTube channel and he took videos of us on that and then posted it online. I didn't really say much. I'm kind of shy when other people are videotaping. But, and then Jeff went this year, I couldn't go. And I was amazed that a couple of the guys asked, hey, where's your friend Rob? One guy actually even brought a guitar he wanted to show me. Which I'm just like, wow, I, I couldn't believe they actually even remembered me. So he's like, oh darn, and he took his guitar, took the guitar back to his car. A couple of them said, yeah, where's your friend Rob? Where's your friend Rob? So that made me feel good. So hopefully I can go with them next year. Um, they had a lot of fun. But apparently Jeff had bought this custom pipe that was on uh, eBay. 
I don't, I don't think he told me the name or who made it, but he had given it to his friend Eric, who went with him on this trip. And there's a guy there that actually uh, quite knowledgeable about custom pipes and stuff. And he says, "Hey, where'd you get that pipe?" And he told him he he got it on eBay. He says, "Can I look at it?" Apparently, it was it's some rare pipe that this guy had only seen one of before. And Jeff only paid like I think thirty dollars for it. So that's amazing. I, I think that's cool that he. Whoever sold it didn't know what they had. So yeah. So anyways, yeah, hopefully I can go with them next year on that that trip. So yeah, so Shannon and I are going to go to that game, probably do the same thing, go that morning, eat at the Pyramid, and then go to Fremont the next morning. We both enjoyed that. And then October 3rd? Sometime early October, Ming and I are going to that uh, the Great Pumpkin Beer Festival in Seattle they have every year. This will be our third year going. We have a blast at that. I mean, all there, all there are pumpkin beers and pumpkin ciders and stuff, which I actually like. So and you, you you buy these tickets and you, the last two years they've had it, or well, last year they had it at the Seattle Center and this year they're also having it at the Seattle Center. And uh, you walk in, you, give, you show them your ticket and they give you a glass. It looks like a little tiny brandy glass. And each year they have a different, like carved pumpkin face in it and in what, you know, I think this year it's the 14th annual uh, Pumpkin Beer Festival. And then they give you some tickets for uh, to go to the different booths to try out these beers. They have like, oh, at least 70 different pumpkin beers and, and uh, ciders that you can try and you can buy more tickets. But yeah, I think they give you like eight tickets and they, you know, give you about well, that much in your glass. It's probably a total of three or four ounces. Yeah, and they have, um, so you get to go around and you try these different pumpkin beers and stuff, and they have a DJ up in this scaffolding where they have this design around it. It looks kind of like a pumpkin head, and they have a DJ up there, and then you have smoke, and, and then they usually have a marching band that comes through. A really eclectic, cool marching band that, that uh, goes through and plays different songs and stuff and then one year they had acrobats and dancers and it's just it's kind of like a, a party kind of a, a loose party they have t-shirts you can buy and and uh, some other memorabilia last year I got a shirt I didn't they didn't they ran out of the the festival shirts so I got an Elysian it's put on by Elysian Brewing and I got an Elysian shirt I thought was cool. I'm not big into dark beers, but it's a like a pumpkin mocha type beer that they have. But the back is a like a pumpkin drinking a cup of coffee. I thought that was kind of cool, so I bought that. What's wrong, Ozzy? So yeah, so we'll be doing that. I don't. We're not sure if Angel can go or not with this. So we're just gonna. Angel's gonna get hers and my tickets because she can get them cheaper over there and then Ning's ticket we always get her the designated driver ticket and you can only get those online so I'll get that but uh, both both years you know, Ning shows them her designated driver ticket and they still give her a glass with tickets in it it's the funniest thing I'm like okay <laughs> um, probably this year they won't but uh, I thought it was kind of funny so I ended up getting double the tickets so we got two glasses from each time we've gone so that's cool I use them for drinking whiskey once in a while I like to sip whiskey and... uh, let's see what else is going on not a whole lot I haven't played cards in a while I like to have Ron or Desiree or Danielle and Ben and them over to play cards once in a while I need to go to the shooting range again. I bought a year membership there. And I got um, 
about 50 t uh, targets where you can the, they're kind of covered in black wax and when you hit it with a bullet it melts the black wax so you can see where it, there's fluorescent colors underneath where you can see need to go up there again last time Shannon Eric my nephew Eric Ning and I went and we had a pretty good time Shannon had this cool Colt it was a Colt 22 but it was like it's built just like this the six shooters from the 70s I mean he it, his gun was from the 70s it's a neat thing it's like a single action cowboy gun but it's for 22 we had a blast shooting that too and shot my my 22 I actually bought for Ning the victory Smith and Wesson victory that's a cool gun and shot my Smith and Wesson and Eric had a Oh shoot, I can't remember what brand his is. But he had a carry gun, it was cool. Both bars are 9mm. Had fun with that, so I need to go and do that again. I actually like shooting steel targets better because you get that report, that bing, when you hit it. It's kind of cool, but they don't do that in most, if, if most indoor ranges, I don't think do that. And you, of course, can't do it at this one. In fact, I have a two hour free rental of the VIP room there. I should, I should arrange that sometime. I also have a, a free lesson that I can take, uh, like a safety lesson or something. I need to look into that. My throat's getting a little scratchy. I don't know if it's from the cigar or just too much talking. Ozzy looks a lot better today. He's not panting like he was yesterday. It was really hot yesterday. Jeff had come over and we sat out here and chatted for a while. What else is going on? Oh, I guess uh, Angel won't be coming home for Christmas this year, so that's kind of a bummer. I always take a week off between Christmas and New Year's if I can, or a week close to that. She won't be coming home this year. It's kind of sad. She got a new job at Virginia Mason. And of course she has her school too. So we haven't seen her a lot lately. It'd be nice to see her more often. Need to get out my ukulele and play some more. I haven't picked those. I haven't picked out my ukulele for a couple of weeks now. Well, since I before I got sick. Need to learn a couple more songs. That's fun. I used to play guitar a lot, but I, I the u sorry I say ukulele. It's actually ukulele. The ukulele is really fun to play, and you can take it anywhere. I subscribe to this ukulele underground. There's this guy on there called Aldrin Guerrero that teaches teaches you how to play ukulele. He's really good. He's really and you know what? When we went to no, I didn't mention that we went to Hawaii earlier this year. I uh, went to Maui, but we went on this road to Hana tour where they take you around the the rainforest part of. Maui which is really beautiful and we stopped at this place to get they have this they make it banana bread fresh every day and there was a guy out there playing ukulele and I really didn't pay much attention I thought oh that's cool ukulele and that's that's neat you know and I'm listening to it and then got ready to get back in the bus and he had said his name you know hey my name is Ald Aldrin Guerrero nice to see you you know and it didn't dawn on me until I got home that that was the same guy from this ukulele underground. I kicked myself for not introducing myself. I, the guy is really good. Um, and he was actually there on Maui. That He's normally from Kauai, I think. I think he lives in Kauai. But he happened to be there. I don't know if he's friends with that the, the lady that runs that banana bread stand or not, but he was there playing and I, dummy, I didn't, didn't say hi and, and shake his hand. But, um, yeah, we went to Maui. That was cool. The funny thing about Maui is it's it's really smaller than you think. And the dry side, what they call the dry side, um, the left side of, of Maui is is uh, looks a lot like Yakima. Dry hills, not a ton of vegetation. No, I mean, there's palm trees and stuff, but it's pretty dry, except for the dirt is more like an orangey red color which stains pretty good. I have a pair of socks that 
I got dirty when we we did the the skyline um, zip line tour. We did like eight different zip lines, which was cool. I didn't think they'd let me on because I exceeded the uh, weight limit by like one pound, but they let me go on it anyways, which was cool. Ning loved it. We thought she'd be afraid of it, but she loved it. She had a blast. She said that was her favorite part of Maui. And of course, we went to um, Lahaina, which is the big touristy spot. All the shopping, all the shops and souvenir places, which I thought was kind of cool. We bought a few t-shirts for her family and stuff. Found a perfect one for Jeff. He loved the shirt I got him. But yeah, Maui, we, we stayed at an Airbnb. Beautiful. Nice, nice little, uh, more like an apartment that uh, we were maybe 20 feet from the, the ocean. We were on uh, the second floor, so we had a really beautiful view. Yeah, the thing though is you, you go to Maui, I, it's probably the same in all Hawaii. You rent a car, expect to pay a lot. We had a little Nissan Juke. We had, I think, for five days. I think it was only five days. Over $700. Talk about sticker shock. But, uh, yeah, we really had no other way to get around. So, I mean, it, a lot of your big hotels have shuttles and stuff, but we were at an Airbnb that didn't. So, we had to rent a car. It got us around, but man, I was amazed at the price of the rental car. It's been a long time since I've rented a car, so I don't know if that's normal or what, but man, that was expensive. Cigar keeps going out. Uh, love these LaCroix. this time of night. It'd be nice if it was just a breeze instead of it's pretty heavy wind. Let's see what else is going on. I wrote my uh, I have a pen pal from Kazakhstan. I wrote her again today. I haven't heard from her in a while. Her and I started writing each other um, sending each other emails in the mid 90s. We just kind of started sending each other recipes, you know, like, you know, recipes akin to your region, and and then we just kept emailing each other back for cents. I think she's in her like, 70s now. She, her health isn't the greatest, but she retired recently. She worked at a, a scientific library, and she retired recently, and that was her only access to a computer. She doesn't have one at home. So I don't think she has as much chance to get over there and answer emails. She'll, she'll go back to the, the library and visit her friends once in a while. And that's when she answers her emails. I hope she can keep doing that. I'd, I'd hate to stop writing her. But uh, nice lady. And back then I had quite a few pen pals, but she's the only one I continued writing with. I had a few that I really liked, and they, but their lives changed. You know, one guy got married and um, moved away, and just didn't have access to a computer. He was from Norway. Had another one in South Korea that was going to school when him and I were riding, and he ended up. I think everybody in South Korea, all males, have to join the military, so he ended up joining the military after school, and so we ended up stop riding. And then there was a family in Canada that I'd ride to, but they ended up splitting up, and so stopped riding then. No, um, England. No, th no, th that one was Canada. And then there was another one in England. Um, I don't know why we stopped riding. I think she just lost interest or something. We wrote for a while. She sent me tapes of her kid. Her kids were on some local radio show there and she sent me those tapes. It was kind of cool. 
But yeah, Natalia, that's my friend from Kazakhstan. Her and I have been riding ever since. It's definitely a Hawaiian song. Yeah, I don't know if I'll keep doing it. I might. That'd be kind of cool to just videotape day to day living. My thoughts. I have no perceived notion that people would be interested in it, but I don't know if I might just keep it in my own files or I might post it on. I have a YouTube channel. I've only had posted two videos to it before. Actually, three. But I had to make one private because it was actually a news clip of Angel. Um, she did her senior project about drunk driving and the news actually was there. It's kind of cool. And they talked about her on the news so I recorded that. And I put that just that news segment on YouTube and it was there for a while and then all of a sudden they, they shut it down. They blocked it. So and the other one is of me five years ago I think doing the the ice bucket challenge that everybody was doing. You donate money and then do the ice bucket challenge. So I did that. And then there's another video of Ozzy in the living room. I threw an empty beer bottle on the on the carpet and it's funny, he's chasing around trying to get every little drop out of it. There was really nothing in it. <laughs> uh, he's chasing that around. So I might post it on there. Maybe. My channel's not private, but I don't know. We'll see. If you're interested, well, I mean, you probably won't see this unless you go there. But anyways, my channel is, if you do a search for Rob98902 on YouTube, you'll find it. And I have my my picture on there. There's a picture that my sister Danielle sketched of me. It's kind of cool. So she said I could put that on there. I think Ning has to work this weekend. Probably mornings. I'm gonna go visit mom and dad while she's at work. Tomorrow she's off. Don't know if we'll do anything. You know, I might go to dinner, it's payday. I might go out to dinner. Boy, the wind, the wind is really kicking up kind of blocked here. I have a wall on this side of the porch, but not a cloud in the sky. Let me see. 83 degrees. Wow, that's the coolest it's been in a long time. Probably go back in the house and open all the windows and let the air flow through. For about three days we had the air conditioning running, which we normally don't run it. But it was so hot. We had to have, we had to run that for three, you know, especially for Ozzy, poor guy. I was getting where I was squirting him down with water, and he'd lay in front of the fan. I know that you're not supposed to. I didn't get him very wet, but they can cool off too quickly if you do that. But he's smart enough to know. <laughs> Never had a problem. He's like. First time I went to squirt him down, he's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And then he got in front of the fountain, he's like, oh, oh, yeah, I like this. <laughs> and he'd stop panting, so I know he was feeling better. Well, guys, I've run out of things to talk about, so I think I won't bore you any further. Um, if I do post this, let me know what you think. If you want to see more of this, if there's something different I can do, some way I can Im improve it. I am definitely going to videotape you know, the baseball game when Chan and I go. I'll videotape that as much as I can and then when Ning and I go to the beer festival I'll videotape that but let me know what you think of these um, just sitting here and chatting I know sometime I might 
videotape Jeff and I sitting here chatting, although that would be interesting. Um, those of you who know Jeff can understand that. So, anyways, yeah, let me know what you think. And uh, be honest. Don't just say, hey, it was great. No, be honest. And I will talk to you later. So long. Hello there. Don't be bashful there. Oh, good heavens. An advanced case. Stick out your tongue and go, ah. Oh, no. This is worse than I ever imagined. We'll, we'll have to remove the entire head. Luckily, in your case, you won't miss it. <laughs> yes, a oh, bit of jungle humor there, eh, what? My advice is to stand on one foot, jump up and down, and repeat after me. The zombie makes me sneezy. The zombie makes me sneezy. Then, take the advice tender below and thank you so much for patronizing Shrunken Ned, the jungle's only self-service witch doctor.